be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, Still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples, to tell, no, to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Peter, 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 Peter. I... I find hope in the fact that Jesus chose such a flawed individual to be the first leader of our church. In today's gospel, in response to the question, who do people say that I am? St. Peter makes a beautiful profession of faith. You are the Christ, the Son, of the living God. And yet, we know that Simon Peter would go on to deny and abandon Jesus when he faced his darkest hour. Even so, Jesus sees the good in Simon Peter and calls him a rock and tells him that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. To our modern ears, that is an odd phrase. Over the years, it has lost something in translation. But scripture scholars tell us that folks 
in apostolic times clearly understood it to mean that the power of evil would never overcome the church. And given the divisions and the scandals that have shattered the church in recent years, you might say, really? Father Jerry, really? Are you sure that the power of evil will never overcome the church? Amen? Amen, I say to you. I am absolutely sure. I know that there is evil in the world and evil in the church. I know that I am a sinner. But I also know that evil will never have the last word. God will always have the last word. And it will be a word of life and a word of love. Evil and a world and a life without God's love is not our destiny. Throughout the history of the church, despite the great wounds of schism, infidelities, and diminishments, despite some horrifying corruption and a colossal evil failure to protect our children, the church has always carried in its womb to be born over and over again in Scripture and in the Eucharist, the Christ, who asks us, who do you say that I am? Peter, 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 Peter. My hope for the future of the church is that despite his human weakness, Jesus saw good in St. Peter the Rock. It may have taken Peter some time to fully be in touch with what Jesus saw in him, but it began with Jesus affirming his inner goodness. And you who are present in this church today, and you who stay connected to our worship via live stream, you are my hope for the future of this faith community. For through this gospel, we, we not only have an opportunity to answer the question of who Jesus is for us, but this gospel also points to the goodness that God created in each one of us. St. Augustine once said, dig deep enough in any person and you will find something divine. The good news of Jesus Christ is about who we really are and who we can become. The good news is this. Inside each one of us, there is the person God meant for us to be. Deep within us is the person that God our Father created us to be. Let me give you two quick ways of how we can more fully connect with this good news. First, if you are not already doing it, find some quiet time each day to pray. God will show you, show you the goodness that he has created in you 
if you give him the time to speak to your heart. The rote prayers of our childhood are a good place to start, but there are deeper ways of praying that I hope to explore with you over the coming months and years. And secondly, go to confession. I am used to being busy on Saturday afternoons. And quite frankly, no one of late has been beating down the door of my confession. Perhaps you are saints already. But it is by taking an honest look at our shortcomings that we come to a greater desire to be the persons that God meant for us to be. Go to confession. Like St. Peter and the first disciples, it is the mercy and love of God that will allow us to hope for a better world and a more vibrant faith community. It is the mercy and love of God that will give us the confidence to believe that what the psalmist said is true. Lord, your love is eternal. You will never forsake us, the work of your hands. Amen.